and we are going to solve um, our first kind of composite problem. So let's go ahead and look at the situation that we have here. So we have a composite material, and our composite material is going to be composed of two materials. Uh, our matrix material is going to be our epoxy. So I'm going to so this is our matrix material, kind of all the red here, and so that's going to be our epoxy. And our fiber in the blue here is going to be Kevlar. So the epoxy and the Kevlar have their own Young's modulus. Uh, we also have that the volume fraction of the fiber is going to be 0 0.1. The volume fraction of our matrix is going to be 0 0.9. There's going to be some stress uh, in this 1-1 uh, one, one direction. That's 10 megapascals, stress in the 2-2 two, two direction. And there's going to be some shear stress that we don't know yet. We also know that our new 1-2 is equal to 0 0.2. Um, our G12 is equal to 0 0.2 GPA, and we also have this value of shear stress as well. So let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and start um, basically tabulating these values. So let's go ahead and open up our Mathematica notebook. Unfortunately, we can't kind of work in this simultaneously. Uh, so let's go ahead and write down some of those values. So our E for Kevlar was 82 gigapascals, so 82 times 10 to the 9. I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, let's bring up our notes here. So I'm going to go ahead and get into our correct notebook, get to lecture 14. Let's go ahead and solve out this problem right here, just like we had previously. So let's go ahead and have this side by side. So this is my Kevlar. I have my E of my epoxy. That's going to be equal to 16, or actually, well, excuse me, 1 gigapascal, 10 to the 9. I also have my... Uh, F of fiber is equal to 0.1. I have my F of the matrix, which is equal to 0.9. I have my new 1, 2, that's equal to 0.2. I've got my G12, it's equal to 0.2 times 10 to the 9. And I have also that my sig 1, 1 is equal to 10 times, times 10 to the 6. My sig 2, 2 is equal to 58 times 10 to the 6. And I also have that my Gamma 1, 2, my sh engineering shear strain is equal to 0 0.06. So uh, let's go ahead and we need to solve for, uh, there's three questions that are being asked here. So first, in this kind of you know stress state, what is our epsilon 1, 1, 2, 2, sigma 1, 2? Then what's the angle for our principal stresses? And then what's our shear and engineering, um, our stress tensor and our shear um, tensor, uh, excuse me, yeah, exactly, our strain tensor, excuse me, not shear. What is our stress and strain tensor at 27 degrees counterclockwise from this original stress state? So one of the first things when you're dealing with this problem is we need to kind of recreate this S matrix. So we know that S is equal to this, 1 over E1, and then minus nu 2, 1 divided by E2. Again, let's just go back. We're looking at the fiber direction, make sure that that is the case. So E11 is in our fiber direction. Uh, so that's exactly what we're looking at in this problem right here. So our fiber direction is along the 1-1 one, one direction. So I am going to kind of go ahead. Let's continue working through this problem. So E2 and then 0. And we have minus new 1, 2 divided by E1, I believe it looks like. Yes, that is correct. And then 1 divided by E2 and then 0. And then finally 0, 0. G12, 1 over G12. So this is our compliance matrix. So we need to kind of solve, we're, we're going to do some transformations in here. We need to get these values. So first thing we need to figure out what is E1 and E2. Well, those are just, again, E1 is the Young's modulus of the composite along the fiber direction. We have that equation, and we actually have that up here. So when we're pulling along our uh, fiber direction, our E1 is going to be equal to the uh, volume fraction of our fiber times E of our fiber, which is Kevlar, plus volume fraction of our matrix times E of epoxy. So that's E1. E2 is just going to be uh, this other kind of nastier equation, 1 divided by uh, FF divided by EF plus uh, EF. I should have just made, made it like that, Kev. And then FM divided by EM. Uh, matrix epoxy. Cancel that out. And those are my E1 and E2. Excellent. So I'm getting closer to having this all numerically solved. 
what else do we know about this um, compliance? Center? Well, I know that uh, it must be symmetric. So we have this relationship that new one two is equal to blah blah blah, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I can solve for and figure out what's new one. So solve. I want this must be equal to this, and I can solve for my new two one. So solve for that. Here's my new two one. Set that equal. Oops, new two one, and that's it. So I've got my S matrix now. So let's go ahead and look back what the problem was asking for. We need to solve first for E11, E22, and C112. Well, I've got this expression right here. So I can just set up and solve this linear algebra problem. So I'm going to solve. So E11, E22, uh, and then remember that's gamma12. Set that equal to S dot sig11, sig22, sig12. Three equations, three unknowns. So I want to solve for E11, E22, sig12. There we go. So this is my E11, this is my E22, this is my sig12. So I can go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and copy these out. Set those equal in this coordinate system. So that's that. This is this. And right here. One, two. 10 to the 7th, not set. There we go. Now, that's simply, <laughs> that's all you can do. Or that's all you have to do. Uh, again, a linear algebra uh, problem at that point was to get everything set up correctly. Um, now the question is asking for, well, what is our, what's the rotation get to our principal stresses or principal stress and strain state? Well, I could solve that by, I know, if I do my T matrix, which I have up here. Let me define that. To get to my principal stress state, I know that my, Sig 1 1, sig 2 2, sig 1 2. I know that I have to do t dot this. And then if I take the third component, 3. So, and I just solve for when does my shear stress equal to 0. So that's that third component. So when this is equal to 0, my value of theta. And you can see I get some of these values right here. So, these are all kind of again related or equivalent to uh, you know, again some you know rotation ninety degrees uh, from these values. But there it is. That's your kind of solution right here. It's in degree mode already, so we're good to go. So that's a rotation, or you know one of these is a rotation again depending on your where you're initially at uh, in your Mohr circle. Um, this is the rotation that's going to get you that principal stress state. And finally, question asked then now just asking us what is the stress and strain at 27 degrees counterclockwise rotation. So we could do that fairly uh, kind of straightforward. So we can actually use, there's multiple ways we can kind of solve that problem. So let's go ahead. One of this, uh, one straightforward way would just be to take our t dot sig11, sig22, sig12, and I could just go here, slash dot uh, theta, goes to 27, because that is counterclockwise, so that would be my stresses. Let's make sure that that's equal to our strains. We could do the same thing for our strains, E11, E12, actually 32, 2, and then I'm going to do gamma 1, 2 divided by 2. So that would be, again, my tensorial definition of strain, or I could use this expression in here if I want to get my strain in the new direction, uh, and the stresses in the new direction. Uh, actually, I can go ahead and copy now, so r dot t dot i dot inverse r inverse r dot s dot inverse of t, and then r look at these values right here. This values and then slash dot theta goes to 27. And you can see we recover those values. You can see this factor of 2 off because, again, this is giving us the gamma 1, 2. Um, but you can still see it's the same expression that we're kind of seeing here. So uh, again, it depends on kind of what the question is asking you for, but that's how you can solve and uh, basically confirm those answers. So uh, hopefully that helps. We'll be doing some more composite problems uh, coming up soon. So, uh, But this is kind of the general format. So 
it's all going back to our basics of mechanics and linear algebra and solving these expressions. All right, I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks. Bye.